Hello, and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. This is episode 395, which is five away from 400. What? It, well, it is. My name is Emily Rainbow Davis. Thank you for listening to this blogcast from which I am five away from 400 episodes. That's pretty crazy uh, and exciting, I guess. So what should I do? Any ideas? Please send them to me. I, I don't know how to celebrate such a thing. Uh, I, I feel like I had cake for the 200th episode. And uh, after that, I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe some champagne. Did I have some champagne? I don't know. But if you have ideas, please tell me. Um, so welcome. Welcome. Um, the way this works is I'm going to say a few things, then I'm going to read you a blog, then I'm going to say a couple other things, and then I'm going to sing you a song. Uh, today's blog is about the internet, and so is the song. So start guessing now if you have ideas. <laughs> um, and this uh, blog was inspired by a podcast that I was listening to. Um, I have heard that there are people who make podcasts who don't listen to podcasts, and I am absolutely baffled by that idea. Uh, but I, I am a big podcast listener. Um, and this one was inspired by an episode of Search Engine, which is a podcast that I have enjoyed and have learned some interesting facts from and have shouted at occasionally. There was one episode where they asked this question, um, I believe it was like, what's with all the chicken bones uh, on New York City streets or something like that? And I knew the answer immediately and shouted at it for both episodes. It was a two-parter. And the whole time I was like, well, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for you, so I'm not going to shout it to you. <laughs> but in, in any case, I have, in fact, shouted at, at that podcast. Anyway, this one that I'm going to read to you now, this blog, is called Click the Clicks You Want to See in the World. The podcast I was listening to was about the crisis in journalism, about how so many news sites were disappearing, how so many journalists are losing their jobs, and about how the landscape was changing so dramatically and not for the better. This country has lost one-third of its newspapers and two-thirds of its journalists since 2005, and it is accelerating. I was only half listening, truth be told. I was still pretty wiped out from COVID, and I was dozing a fair amount. But then, after a history lesson in how journalism was funded, and then how that landscape shifted, and then shifted again, I sat bolt upright at a concept the guest, Ezra Klein, brought up. He said, we should not think of ourselves as consumers of the internet, but as generators, his feeling was that we are all rather passively engaging with the internet without realizing that we are creating it while we do that. Basically, the idea is that we are creating with our clicks. What we engage with and look at and pay attention to is the internet we create. If I want to see local news, I have to subscribe to local news, or at the very least, visit local news sites. If I want more independent media, I have to read independent media. I can't just wish for these things to exist. I recognize my own behavior in this. When Jezebel was shut down, I was pretty upset. R.I.P. the last popular feminist media. But I hadn't visited Jezebel in ages. Truthfully, since they were bought by Geo Media, they were starting to fall apart. But even before then, I wasn't over there much. I appreciated that Jezebel existed, but I didn't do anything to help continue its existence. I learned while researching for this that it is coming back via Paste magazine. Hooray for zombie Jezebel! As Klein said, if you want the publication to continue, you have to read it. If you want the podcast to continue, you have to listen to it. If you want an internet with blogs and independent media, you have to read them. We create our own internet. In other words, 
wailing about the evils of social media while continuing to scroll through it for hours doesn't help create alternatives. If we go through the portals of social media to get to our media, we are enforcing the need for social media to filter our media for us. I do this. And I get the internet that I create, a world filtered by Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Bisky, oh, it's Blue Sky, Mastodon, etc. If I like something, I can't wait for it to show up in a feed. I have to go directly to it. Additionally, Facebook has been showing people less and less news in their feeds. This has throttled traffic to news media, which has, in turn, lost them a lot of advertising dollars and threatened their existence. Or killed it entirely. If I want it, I have to go to the thing and click there. I have often thought of this from my own perspective of my needs as an artist engaging with the internet. There are a lot of people who express that they're glad I do what I do, but only a handful that engage with my work, and even fewer that support it. This is as true of my offline theater making as it is with my podcasts, my blogs, or music. I know directly what happens when people don't engage with my work. I feel bad, mostly. But there have definitely been times where the direct line of a project, living or dying, is very clear. Our first season of our first audio drama, The Dragoning, took almost a year to finish because the funding was so slow to come in. We weren't holding episodes back because we wanted to be withholding. We just literally couldn't make a new episode until we reached the episode's budget. Eventually, we got there, and the show has charted around the world. But it was clear there was a big disconnect for a lot of people between support for the podcast and its ability to be made. And it's not just about money. If more people had listened to the show, downloaded the show, even put it on play and walked out to do something else, if we'd gotten more numbers, perhaps we could have found some funding through advertising. But podcast advertising is a numbers game, and if you're not getting a minimum of a thousand downloads an episode, it is not a game you can play. I had ads on this podcast for a week and a half and made a grand total of $1.38. It's very clear to me as a creator how people's investment can make the life or death difference in a creation. I don't know why I hadn't really put it together as a user of the internet. As Klein put it, if you want Pitchfork to exist, you have to read it. Anything we want on the internet, and I would argue out in the world too, we have to engage with it. Here's Ezra Klein on Search Engine. Well, not really. I'm just going to read it to you because I don't have the clipping ability. Anyway, here it is. Here he is. Every time you read one thing over another or watch or listen to or spend time on, you are creating more of that thing and less of other things, right? There is still some money that comes from just like your attention. Then a level above that, when you pay for anything, when you become a member or subscriber, then you're really sending a signal to generate more of that thing and not of the other. End quote of Ezra Klein. We turned the vibrant, disparate, quirky internet into a series of social media sites. And if we like that, cool, that's what we have. But if we want other things, we have to engage with them and we also have to pay for them. I really wanna do this. I want more art, I wanna pay for more artists. I'd love to support my fellow artists on Patreon, like Alexandra Scott, Betsy Van Dusen, Dance Naked Creative, Monica Byrne, Michael Heron, and so many more. And when I start to make a living wage, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Meanwhile, to create the internet I want to see in the world, I have to actually click on my values. I can't just like the funny onion headline on Twitter. I have to click on the article and go read it on the Onion's website. If I want more Onion, I have to read the Onion. But this is the thing, though. 
I used to read The Onion cover to cover when it was a paper publication I could just pick up on the street. Now I have to remind myself to click when I see an article go by on social media. And once I get over there, I don't read that whole issue. I just read what I came for and get out. I'm guessing we're not going back to paper, but it was a lot better for some things. I currently read every issue of New York Magazine because I subscribe to it on paper. It comes in the mail and then I read it. For me, subscribing means I get both local news and a way to voice my support for one of my favorite journalists, Rebecca Traster, who writes there. I know other publications languish because I chose that one. That's my current vote, since I don't really read much news on the internet, which I guess is also a vote. But if I want the old, quirky internet full of funky, weird websites, I have to visit those. So I didn't really read you the last line of this one because it's really just like a side note, which is that I put a bunch of links in this post of weird stuff you could click on. So (laughs) you can't click on it because you're listening to this on a podcast. But if you want to click on some weird stuff, some fun bits, then you could go to artiststruggle.wordpress.com and uh, scroll down till you find this blog, which again is called Click the Clicks You Want to See in the World. I would tell you to do the entire web address, but it's like got the date and the, anyway, it's just like it's too much. I'll put a link to it in the show notes, as I always do actually for these. Um, so if you, if you need a, a, a thing you could just push, that'll be there in the show notes. Uh, yes. So, um, I, I am trying to do this more. I'm not always successful because I have fallen into habits. And also, like, I have to be on various social media to, like, you know, promote my stuff. So I go there and then I get hypnotized and I stay there. <laughs> Instead of going like, oh, maybe I should read an article uh, on The Guardian or whatever. And I did visit some old favorites while you know, searching for links to connect up to like the old quirky internet. I I spent some time on homestarrunner.com. It's been a long time since I've been over there. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, anyway, there's some, some various other links like that in the actual post. And what song am I going to give you? Well, I looked up songs about the internet and, uh, I found Bo Burnham's Welcome to the Internet. And uh, it's perfect. It's perfect for this particular post. I did watch the show special. It's not a movie. TV? What is it? I don't know. I watched it. Uh, It's from something called Inside, if you haven't seen it. I'm not sure I recommend it. It is good. It's just like, for me, it was very triggering. (laughs) because it's basically him in the in the in the middle of the pandemic like you know trying to survive and uh that that was very familiar um so I had to watch it in like small doses to get through it but this song is in that show special thing um I'd forgotten about it completely uh but now I've learned it and it was really fun to learn So uh, I will play for you momentarily. Welcome to the internet. As long as I'm recommending Bo Burnham songs, though, I would like to suggest that you listen to his 1985, which I the reason I watched his pandemic special inside was because I had heard this song 1985 when I was looking for something else for this blogcast. And I really enjoyed the song. So I was like, I'll watch the special that has this song in it. Turned out he'd he'd cut this song from the special. So it's only in the like littlest moments of the outtakes. And I guess there's an album of songs that aren't in the thing. Anyway, fooled me. Watched the whole thing looking for this one song called 1985. Never showed up. But uh, I do recommend the song. It is uh, very enjoyable. Um, so thank you for listening to this whole experience. 
Um, if you like this show, please tell someone about it. Like, review, subscribe, do all the things you can do in your podcast app, or you could go visit another one and, and do it there, too. I just noticed we got a really sweet review of The Dragoning uh, recently. I'd like to like I missed it completely. They don't really notify you. So stuff turns up and then like you happen to stumble upon it and you're like, oh my gosh, this is lovely. Um, so you can do that for this podcast in whatever app you're in. Apple is a good one for spreading the word because a lot of other podcast platforms just take from a- Apple. Like Apple is the source for them rather than the RSS feed. So um that's why Apple is a good place to do it if you use Apple. And I'm not saying you should. Anyway, uh, all of that to say thank you um, for listening. And also, if you'd like to support this blogcast, I, as given an example by Mr. Klein earlier, <laughs> you can do that. Uh, I'm on Patreon, patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis. If you want to really like make sure that this continues to exist, that's the way to do it. Patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis. And then there's also Ko-fi. There's PayPal. You can do sort of one-time payments on PayPal and Ko-fi, but you can also sign up to do like a regular supporting situation on Ko-fi. So you are welcome to do all of those things. Or you could sign up to be a paid member on Substack. And uh, if there's other stuff, please let me know about it and I'll sign up. So mostly, thank you for listening. And uh, I shall now give to you this song by Bo Burnham. Welcome to the Internet. Welcome to the Internet. Have a look around. Anything that brain of yours can think of can be found. We've got mountains of content, some better, some worse. If none of it's of interest to you, you'd be the first. Welcome to the internet. Come and take a seat. Would you like to see the news or any famous women's feet? There's no need to panic. This isn't a test. (laughs) Just nod or shake your head and we'll do the rest. Welcome to the internet. What would you prefer? Would you like to fight for civil rights or tweet a racial slur? Be happy, be horny, be bursting with rage. We've got a million different ways to engage. Welcome to the internet. Put your cares aside. Here's a tip for straining pasta. Here's a nine-year-old who died. We've got movies and doctors and fantasy sports. And a bunch of colored pencil drawings of all the different characters of Harry Potter fucking each other. Welcome to the internet. Hold on to your socks, cause a random guy just kindly sent you photos of his cock. They are grainy and off-putting, he just sent you whore. Don't act surprised, you know you like it, you whore. See a man beheaded, get offended, see a shrink. Show us pictures of your children, tell us every thought you think. Start a rumor, buy a rumor, send a death threat to a boomer. Or DM a girl and groomer, do a zoomer, find a tumor. And your here's a healthy breakfast option, you should kill your mom. Here's why women never fuck you, here's how you can build a bomb. Which Power Ranger are you? Take this quirky quiz. Obama sent the immigrants to vaccinate your kids. Could I interest you in everything, all of the time? A little bit of everything, all of the time. Apathy's a tragedy and boredom is a crime. Anything and everything, all of the time. Could I interest you in everything, all of the time? A little bit of everything, all of the time. Apathy's a tragedy and boredom is a crime. Anything and everything, all of the time. It wasn't always like this. Not very long ago, just before your time, right before the towers fell, circa 99. This was catalogs, travel blogs, a chat room or two. We set our sights and spent our nights awaiting. 
you, you, insatiable you, mommy let you use her iPad, you were barely two, and it did all the things we designed it to do. Now look at you, look at you. To put the world in your hand. <laughs> Could I interest you in everything all of the time? A bit of everything all of the time. Apathy's a tragedy and boredom is a crime. Anything and everything all of the time. Could I interest you in everything all of the time? A little bit of Apathy's a tragedy and boredom is a crime. Anything.